Yo, yo, what's good? What's good, people? How y'all doing out there? Uh, it's your boy Kelvin behind the bench. Big shout out to everyone out there. Uh, big shout out to all the new subscribers that done came through. Showed us love. Salute to y'all, man. Uh, big shout out to the other guys in the group. JB, Shot, Kobe Bryant Film Room. Y'all sub up to his page. And um, Big Dog Talk Sports. Y'all sub up to his page. Uh, salute to those gentlemen also, man. Uh, we continue to grow and move forward. All right. Uh, I want to talk about this topic here. Um, I want to talk about a throwback series. Uh, I saw Two Raw for TV. He dropped a video about this. And um, I want to talk about this series and give my opinion on it. Uh, salute to Two Raw, man. Big fan of his channel. Uh, big fan of his work. But... I just want to give my opinion on this series. Um, you know, this series here, um, probably the best playoff series of the last 20 years, from the year 2000 up until the current day. I don't think it's in any, being a playoff series, or any series that can compete with this series from top to bottom, from game one to game seven. Uh, maybe that Boston – Bull series, I think it was an old nine. Round one was a great series, but um, as far as two heavyweight teams going at it, I think this is probably the best series. And so, it's a lot of controversy surrounding this series because, uh, you know, the referee, uh, I can't remember his name, I think his name is Donahue or Donahue, the guy, you know, that got caught up in the scandal and he got caught for gambling and stuff like that. He ended up going to prison. And when he got out of prison, he talked about this series and talked about it being rigged and doing stuff for the league and making money and stuff like that. Um, so uh, a couple years ago, uh, this game six of this series, which is the infamous game that everybody talks about uh, during the pandemic, I went back and watched it. Now, the full game was on YouTube. It's not available anymore. Um, they only have, I think, the fourth quarter. And um, when I watched the game six, I didn't come away feeling like the game was rigged. Um, there were some calls that went in the favor of actually both teams when I when I went back and watched it. Now, was there some 50-50 calls that the Lakers got? Yes. But Sacramento also got some calls this game. Um, Chris Webber, in particular, should have filed out this game. See, they don't want to talk about that. He should don't want to uh, speak on that. And Mike Bibby was getting a lot of calls, a lot of superstar calls this file. I mean, uh, this uh, this game. Uh, Derek Fisher was guarding him. He ended up with five fouls. I almost fouled out. So when I went back and watched it, this game. I didn't come away feeling like it was rigged or anything like that. You know, to me, this series was lost, number one, at the free throw line, the Sacramento Kings. In key moments, they missed a lot of free throws. And then a late game execution, the Kings just choked. You know, they blew the series. Uh, to me, this Lakers team was not a great, great team. It was Shaq and Kobe carrying the heavy load. And then, you know, you had Fisher and uh, Ori and Fox and stuff like that. But I didn't think this was a great team. I thought Sacramento, from top to bottom, had the better team. But at certain points of this series, they blew it. Starting out with game one. Uh, Sacramento had the better record during the regular season, so they had home court. And immediately, game one, they lost at home. They blew their game. Okay, they come back and win game two at home. And then they go on the road to L.A. They win game three. They get home court back. They win that game in dominating fashion. And then game four, this is the game, you know, with the infamous Robert Orr shot. But this is a game here that really changed the series. This game, game four. Sacramento was dominating this game for most of the game. They were up big, and they let the Lakers come back. And, you know, we know what happened at the end of game four with Kobe missed the layup, and then Shaq missed the layup, 
And then Vlade Divac tipped the ball out, and Robert Ory hit the shot and tied the series up. And see, that ain't got nothing to do with being rigged. That's poor execution, you know, with a big lead. You know, in a playoff situation, especially on the road, you got to be able to execute. And the Sacramento Kings didn't, and they blew that game. Game five, people don't talk about this game. Sacramento got a lot of calls in their favor this game, uh, including, you know, the late game when Mike Bibby hit that shot. What people don't talk about, I think Phil Jackson mentioned it, um, where the the pick, the screen that Chris Webber set on Derek Fisher, that should have been a foul. They don't call it. It was a moving screen. They don't call it. Mike Bibby hit the shot. And then – at the end of game five, before Kobe uh, take the shot, he gets fouled by Bobby Jackson. They don't call that, which caused him to rush that shot, and he missed. Okay, and then we go to the game six. And again, the game six, you know, they talk about the free throws in the fourth quarter. I'm going to drop a link in the description. Y'all can go watch the fourth quarter of this game six. And when you watch it, you, it ain't going to be no whole lot of controversy and BS calls like y'all think, man. You know, the only calls that was kind of iffy to me was beginning of the fourth quarter, Scott Pollard, the foul they called on him on Shaq. I thought that was a kind of iffy call. And then there was another call where Kobe Bryant drove baseline and Doug Christie was guarding him, and they called a foul. I thought that was kind of iffy. But other than that, you know, to me, I thought it was very fairly officiated in the fourth quarter, including the play where you'll see where Chris Webber uh, grabbed Robert Orr's arm, where it should have been a foul call. They didn't call it. And Vladdy Divac fouled out. He was talking about, oh, man, Vladdy, you know, they fouled out the big man. Well, when y'all see this fourth quarter, you'll see where Chris Webber clearly grabbed Robert Orr's arm. It should have been a foul on him. They didn't call it. You know, well, he got away with that. And so the game six, the reason why the Lakers won this game is because of executing big shots. Shaq made some big shots. Kobe made big shots down the stretch. But most importantly, both of these gentlemen made their free throws, including Shaq. There was one point in this game, game six, where Shaq made 10 straight free throws. And we know he's a historically bad free throw shooter. They don't, people won't talk about that. I believe in – let me look. In this game, Shaq ended up hitting 13 out of 17 free throws, 76%. That's way higher than historically he's been a bad free throw shooter. He, he normally shoots in the 50s. In that game, he you know he made his free throws. He ended up scoring 41 points. Kobe also made his free throws. He won 11-11 from the line. And in this game, the Lakers uh, – let's see – they, I think they shot 81%. Uh, they shot 85% from the foul line this game six. And see, and then late in this game six, Sacramento had a chance to win the game. They had the lead late. And they didn't execute. They blew it. Sacramento, this game, let's see. Let's look at their free throw percentage real quick. Uh, they shot 72%. Chris Webber. Two for five from the line. Star player, you can't you can't be missing free throws, man. You know, so. And then of course we know the Kobe Bryant play where he hit Mike Bibb in the nose. That's the image that everyone's seen for years and years and years. But that was incidental. If you look at the video and watch, you will see that Mike Bibby clearly has his arm around Kobe's waist. And he fouled him, and they didn't call it on Mike Bibby. Well, he fouled Kobe, and Kobe was trying to get through, and he accidentally hit him in the nose. I'm going to play a little audio. I'm going to let y'all hear Steve Snapper Jones. He talked about this, this play. I'm going to let y'all hear it for yourself. One second. He's here in front. He's trying to hook, and Kobe's trying to wait, bust wait, through. He's trying to hook. He's, he's standing there, but he put his arm around his waist. Now Kobe's trying to break through, but on coming through, that's when he catches him with that elbow. Uh, Bibby was making the smart play. Let me locate. You see his arm underneath, and then he just gets handled right in the 
right in the nose, and his nose is bleeding, and they made him use their last time out. That 20 second is gone. And there you go. Snapper Jones, he explained it right there. I played the audio where Mike Bibby is hooking Kobe. And when y'all watch this fourth quarter, you'll see it. He got his right arm around Kobe's waist. They didn't call it. Kobe's trying to get through to get to go towards the ball as the ball is being inbound. And he accidentally hit him in the nose. So it should have been a foul on Mike Bibby that they did not call, I believe. You know, so... I don't know why all this rigged or whatever. And as you watch this fourth quarter, you'll see that I know the Lakers shot what, 27 free throw, I believe, in this quarter or whatever. All of these calls are just about right. There's not no controversy or whatever. You know, it's late game foul and stuff like that. You'll see some fouls on Shaq. That's just how dominant Shaq was in the post. You know, you had to grab and hold and stuff like that. That. You know, when you're dealing with Shaq in his prime and stuff like that back in the day, he was going to file out your whole front court. That was the problem with dealing with Shaq, you know. So, man, you know, all this old rigged game six, nah, man. That, that And I ain't just saying it because I was a Lakers fan back then. If it was rigged, I would call it. But this ain't no rig. Again, I'm going to drop the link where y'all can watch the game six, four quarter yourself. The whole game is not on YouTube anymore. They took it down. But you can watch the full quarter, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And then people forget there was a game seven. The series wasn't over after game six. Sacramento had home court. They won game three, and they got home court back. So they got a game seven in their home building, and they blew it. And they blew it by not executing in the, in the uh, clutch. And missing free throws. And again, the Lakers made their free throws. And that was the difference in the series. Let's go over the free throws real quick. Uh, game 7, free throws. Sacramento Kings shot 53% from the foul line. That's the game. That's the series. Chris Webber, 2 for 4. Mike Bibby was 6 for 8. Hilo Turkoglu was 1 for 4. Lottie Divock, 5 for 10. Pedro Stojakovic, 2 for 2. Uh, they shot 16 from 30 from the foul line, 53%. You're not going to win no championship. Let's look at the Lakers. Let's look at their foul shooting. They shot 81%. Game 7 on the road. They executed late game foul shooting. That was the difference in the series. Kobe, 8 for 10. Shaq. A historically bad free throw shooter. He told y'all, and he said this many times, I make them when they count. And I talked about this in the previous video where on occasion in big games, Shaq would make his free throws. Game seven on the road, season on the line, Shaq shot 73%, 11 out of 15 from the foul line. That's what your superstar is supposed to do. Kobe, superstar, 8 out of 10, 80% from the foul line. And that was the difference in the series. Free throw shooting, late game execution. 81%. And that's that. So, you know, all this rigged and all that type stuff. Nah. Sacramento, top to bottom, had the better team, the better talent. They blew it. Losing game one at home. Blowing the big lead in game four. Game six. They was actually up late in game six, missing free throws, late game execution. They blew it. Game seven at home, 53% from the foul line. And the game went to overtime, and you still couldn't win at home. That's the series. Not no refs. So all this conspiracy talk that's been going on for the last 20-some years, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of BS. Watch the full quarter for yourself. The link is going to be in the description box. And watch it with your honest eyes, honest heart. Just get the rig shit out your mind. Just watch, and you'll see. Ah, oh, man, this shit wasn't rigged. Kind of a couple iffy calls, but yeah, that shit wasn't rigged. All those foul calls in, in that fourth quarter, those were correct calls by the rest, man. 
you know. So, you know, just let you guys know I'm working on video editing, learn some video editing so that I can start giving you guys some visual content in the future months. And I'm going to come back to the series. And we're going to have a visual look at it. You know, this whole series we're going to talk about, especially game six. We'll go through it, and I'm going to talk about it, and I'm going to show you guys, and you'll see it. You know, I'm just taking my time to learn the video editing. And so in the future months, especially in the off season, I know a lot of y'all be craving basketball, and y'all like historical teams, historical games. And I'm going to start going over that. I got some Chicago Bulls games with Michael Jordan. We're going to do, we're going to go through that and some other historical games we're going to look at. But I'm going to do it from a visual way that we can look at it and have fun with it together. We'll come back to this series together also so we can look at it. But I just want to speak on this series, man. It, it, it's not. I, I understand, you know, the Lakers and the NBA, and especially the, the modern-day Lakers with LeBron and stuff like that. This series, to me, was not rigged. To me, the difference in the series was late-game execution and free throw shooting. The Lakers made their free throws. They were defending champions. They were used to big games and clutch situations, and the Sacramento Kings were not. You know, Chris Webber, to me, was kind of, at that time, was like a James Harden type. He had Hall of Fame talent, but he would always choke in the big moments, in the big games, even going back to college. It's the reason why I never was a big fan of Chris Webber. He had a lot of James Harden in. He was a playoff choker. And in this series, he did that. They choked. Wasn't no rig. The Sacramento Kings flat out choked. They were the better team. They choked away this series. Wasn't no refs, man. So, that's all I want to say. Just a little rewind on this series, man. Uh, God bless y'all, man. I'll catch y'all in the next episode. I'm out, man.